lit a firestorm about illegal fake accounts, black market accounts, immigrants getting into the business, working for the mafia and all this shit. Yeah. Apologies for the shit. Um, no, no, I've, I have it on my list. Um, I think that's really not getting enough play. And I'm going to do my best with my journalist friends to put this out there. It's unsafe for the consumer. Okay, you order food from Sergio, right? And, and uh, Juanita shows up and I'm like, uh, no, no. And these companies know all this. They can stop this immediately. Mm -hmm. But who else is going to take that triple stack for two bucks? Yeah, because it wasn't Cody. He said, I've seen a door. He didn't. I know. He, him uh, I didn't say he, he didn't it, take it. Saying, obviously, <laughs> he's the same person. <laughs> yeah. And he's I not mean, a, He's not being pressured to take it. But again, out of 562 million orders DoorDash did, there were a whole bunch of those, I'm pretty sure. Right. And, yeah. and, and those are individual orders. They're not dollars worth, by the way, individual. And Uber did 2.44 billion orders, billion with a B. It's individual trips, food or a delivery or a ride share. Think about the size. Okay, so put those two together: three billion individual orders or ride share trips. Think about that scale. So, and a lot of them are trash, garbage, and somebody's doing it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be three billion. You know, we can all say, oh, cherry pick, oh, do this, oh, do that. I'm like, no, you know, our reach is nothing. 1% of the total crowd. So, yeah. This is, here in terms of the, yeah I don't know if you know Zone. This is a uh, um, a listener up in Montreal, Quebec. Um, he's yeah, saying that, that is, he's talking yeah. about data, you know. That has money now. That has gold now, you know. Yeah. You guys, do you guys, anybody in the chat or you, Steve, or whoever's going to watch this later? How many little bank robberies have you guys heard lately? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's the point? You know, I'm gonna get busted. So, so now I might as well do hacking, get the money that way, or collect data and sell the data, and that's what they're doing. I mean, I, I'm telling you guys. So <laughs> it's a it's an amazing world out there that we're living in. And and um, you know, I do. I have stopped watching other channels. I watch Steve because he puts out legitimate. I mean, not that the other ones are not legitimate. I don't want to insult anybody. Um, more, it's a more, little more entertaining. It's more like get together kind of a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's whatever. I don't have yeah. time for it, but um, I see, I see a lot of people, you know, being happy with what they're doing, and all power to you. Nobody's put a gun to your head not to do this. Yeah, right. Nobody's forcing you to turn the app on. And except that, with these migrants that they're being, you know, pushed into this funnel and given some pocket money and working 12 hours and giving the owner bulk of the money that they earn. And and that, I'm going to bring that out, yeah, with the help of journalist friends, because that's not being talked about. And that's adding to what we started with, oversaturation, right? And I, I want to add to that, too, because, Sergio, in 2019, I put up an article on Uber Lyft drivers, my website uh -huh. that said that was Uber Eats drivers are renting out their jobs to Im to illegal immigrants. Yes, they are. So that right, this is 2019. That appeared in like the top 20 articles for two or three weeks. Yep. It has not appeared back in the top 20 um, since. For the past month, it's been in the top five, if not the top one story, and it's from four years ago. That's true. Now, right. again, it, you can't just use that metric, but that's something, guys. I get a decent mm -hmm. amount of volume at the website. And if, I mean, that's just one example of why is this 2019 story coming up so much? Why is because it? It's, it was valid in 2019 to a certain degree. And to today, it's very valid, very, very relevant. And, and, and I am, I would have put the piece, I'm an immigrant. I'm not, I have nothing against immigrants, but I don't no, want no, no. the first, first experience in a country like ours to be ex, you know being exploited discriminated against all that stuff plus on the consumer side it's not safe okay yeah because these people are not background check the background check is on the account owner and then you can buy a black market doordash uber whatever account you want and then these companies are all going playing the game of oh is this safe you know all our drivers gone through background checks well except the driver that shows up is not the driver of the account so and these companies can put an end to this but they will not and I'll call them out every chance I get until this is fixed. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of every, every gig worker 
getting taking a selfie and uploading to their AI. And I heard the pushback on this. Oh, it's so inconvenient. I'm like, no, it's safer, one, two. And a lot of people said, oh, by the way, I can just take a picture of mine and show from one phone or a, or a photograph to the AI. Uh-uh. Their AI systems are so much smarter than what you guys think it is. That ain't going to work. Hey, man, every two hours, DoorDash should ask the dasher, take a picture. Yeah. How long does that take? 10 seconds? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, they, I can put a stop to this. They're not doing it. Why are they not doing it? Because that triple stack, two bucks, is only mm -hmm. going to be taken by a migrant who's working for some other owner of the account. Or, like, I know I heard you saying that you can go to the black market and get an account. There's okay. even a worse there's even a worse thing going out of people who rent their accounts out daily. Absolutely. Who are like, give me 120 bucks. You can have my account for the day. Yep. And you I mean, I know some gig out. workers who go out for the day and barely yeah. make 120 now. Uh, yeah. But what happens is that if that gig worker was making, you know, let's say, okay, let's just do the math. If you do 12 hours of DoorDash and assuming 18 to 20 bucks an hour gross, you're going to make 200, 240 bucks. Right. So if you're giving the account owner 120 and you keep the 120, okay, that's nothing. That's bullshit wages for you. But if you're from Venezuela, if you're from Ukraine, if you're from wherever, you are making 120 a month, let alone a day. So I'm like, to them, it's gold. Again, nothing against the immigrants, nothing against the migrants. None no, of that no, is no, the no. issue. This is not political, people. It's, it's all, just, it's all, just all, hurting. All, all with this stuff, so. It's just hurting all of it. Look, before this was a problem, I mean, it's been a problem for years, but before it was becoming so big, yeah. we already were oversaturated in every market. And yeah. that was by drivers who were working so hard to get off wait lists to yeah. do this and whatnot. And so that was already oversaturated to put this on top of it is I, I, I give it a lot more weight than most people do too. Most people are like, well, that's probably only handfuls of people. I'm like, no. I don't think, you know, cause there's a lot of people who cannot get other work. Nope. And, and again, that's the good part of the gig economy, right? I talked to thousands and thousands of drivers. Like a month ago, I was at LAX for six hours and I talked to hundreds and hundreds of drivers face to face. Right. I see the desperation, right? I see the depression that this is the only thing they can do. They either have a handicap or physically, you know, can't work, um, you know, all these things. They can hold a job. And look, the economy is doing wonders for these people because this is the only way they're going to earn. That's the good part of the gig economy. But the bad part of the gig economy is when you have the same size pie and many more mouths to feed, then everybody's going to get hurt. And I mean, look, there's not much that could be done except that. Uh, more, uh, you know, um, verifying ID checks and verifying, you know, selfies, selfie verification. I do it every six hours when I drive right here. Every six hours, the app goes, oh, can't go online, take a selfie. Okay. And I do it happily. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and to me, that, that should be the, that should be more often on delivery because this is mostly happening on delivery. Not that, not that mm -hmm. people are not renting their accounts on ride share, but you know, the, 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 the writer figuring out, I mean, the writer is looking at the owner account owner's picture and then, you know, somebody else is showing up. It's pretty obvious because we're past the mask days now. Right. Well, I that's mean, what I, I was going to add that guy. too. Not only do you have these workers coming on and like you were saying, you know, it's the only work they can get. They actually didn't get that work correctly. So, you now have a very sketchy character who might not be sketchy, but if given the right situation, might take advantage of it because it's not their name on the account. 